guys, I'm Casey Spivey. I'm Andy Luani. And I am Ryan Mitchell, aka the Slay Guy. And you're watching What's Trending Uncensored, where we talk about the biggest stories of the week and give our opinion about what's going on. Anything and everything. Anything and, and everything. I probably just talk a lot of shh. <laughs> I didn't want to cuss. I'm, I'm going to try to be really cute and not cuss today. I, you know, we got to stay monetized. Yes. I know you, YouTube. You're a little shady over there. <laughs> <laughs> so today we're going to talk about the influencer who was caught photoshopping her clouds, Nikita Dragon's VMA look, and Shane Dawson and Lisa finally talking about their breakup, um, and Troy Sivan with his um, Bob magazine. Bob magazine, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, um... Let's start with this influencer who is okay. photoshopping. First of all, when you say, when you brought this up first, I literally thought Ariana Grande, cloud, like, that's the only thing. I'm also like, why are you photoshopping clouds? <laughs> but here's the thing, I didn't understand really what the big deal was because I, first of all, am like the face of Facetune. Um, so I really enjoy it. I don't have a problem. It's clouds, like she's wanting, she's a travel Instagrammer. Like she has to kind of create the ambience of like, I'm going to these beautiful places. I need to like make everything look gorgeous. And she's like, well, if it's a cloudy day, how is she not gonna have any clouds? Yeah, exactly. What the hell? I know, I, I, I hesitated on even covering this a lot yeah. of people sent this to me and i was like what's what's she the big good. deal i mean i think i don't know if it's photoshop anymore i mean it's she... uh it's most definitely face turned but it's great it's beautiful yeah i mean people are are saying like it's it's creating a false sense of reality and stuff like that and i think that might be a generational difference yeah because i think people now or kind of younger audiences now yeah. are very like I assume that I this is I also Photoshop my clouds. Yeah. Yes. So. But here's the thing. I feel like Instagram is such a highlight reel, especially if it's your business. You're putting the best foot forward. You're not just going to put anything up there. So yeah. in my opinion, I still don't, as long as she's not like, you know, making her waist super, super tiny. And it's, it's not like she's putting herself in this weird, like body frame that's not realistic. She's messing with the, like the outside. It's clouds. It's not that big of a deal but, in my opinion. But the reality is like, if you look at it that way too, you have these people who are partnering with her for like resort companies and anything else, guests will come and be like, this is what I'm supposed to experience. If it's that one falsehood of like, you know, clouds, it could be people coming in and saying, oh, well, I saw this picture. I thought my stay was supposed to be like this. And you could just get back well, to the business end. She's not mother nature. She's she, not, it's not. She's so if a person is going to that resort and they're like, oh, I want the sun. Someone conjure the sun right now. Like that's not going to happen. So they, that's, that's the thing about in, the whole influencer thing and the celebrity thing. I feel like yeah. we are not role models and they are not, you know, people that you are supposed to be, you know, putting on this pedestal, even though that's kind of how the world is is in some way mm -hmm. um i think a lot of times you have to take it for what it is like the photo and yes now you know that she's putting clouds in the sky that sounds beautiful if you put it in a song ariana grande can sing about clouds why can't she just make some appear t okay wait there's like a photo series period like it's the same well she has said i have never lied about this i tell my influ i tell my people that i what apps i use i use a free app to manipulate the sky She's like, I don't know why. It's not a secret. <laughs> and especially if she's being transparent, because you know brands are actually very intense when it comes to the captions, like what you're doing, like especially if it's brand. I mean, it's a brand of content. And so a lot of times you have to kind of play it by the book. You can't just do anything that you want if you are making money off of your content. Right. And so I, if she's being transparent, I think the internet needs to go take a nap because they're just like low-key too woke for me. <laughs> too intense. Yeah. Too much really backlash. Intense. It's really too a mess. Many clouds. <laughs> So many clouds. Yeah. Speaking of influencers. Girl. All right. Miss Nikita Dragon um, decided to ha have men on leashes as a part of well, her VMA look. it was inspired look. by Snoop Dogg's 2003 look. Did you know that? I did it was, not know that. It was actually inspired by Snoop Dogg when he brought, I think it was three girls and like they had callers right. to the VMAs in 2003. So that's what she said she was inspired by. She even put it on like her stories. Yeah, for sure. I knew that. Yeah. I did not know that. I, we, man, we have a lot of throwback influencers throwing back. We have Tana with Britney. And okay. Is that what we're calling that? Because that was a <laughs> terrible job at that. I was so offended every time I saw a photo by photo. And Someone I was like, she's not Britney. She could never be Britney. Just because you bring a snake on the carpet does not mean you are Britney. And that's no shade. I think she's great. But no. 
Yeah. Someone said, she looks scared, and I quote tweeted, and I go, yes, the snake does look scared. Go <laughs> ahead. <laughs> um, yeah, so this happened. But Nikita. I didn't know that she was being called racist, racist and sexist. It is a little, like, that's a hard image to see. Like, yeah. you know. So here's the reason why she's being called racist, even though she's technically a woman of color. Um, there's this idea of putting anyone, a human, on a leash and it kind of relaying back to like a slavery situation, especially a black person. Yeah. Um, in my opinion, I totally understood what she was doing when it came to the flipping the gender roles and putting men in the way that they've done women in certain times. Mm -hmm. And I, one, wasn't offended by it. Maybe, I think it was a very sexy choice and the VMAs is all about fulfilling some type of fantasy and you're not supposed to, um, you have to go back to like the all denim looks that Justin and Britney had and the Do meat you know, dress. You and have to go back. I <laughs> will always Iconic. go back. But here's the thing, it's like you're, you're creating these fantasy moments on the VMA carpet. That's what is iconic about the VMAs in some way. Okay. And so for me, I I did not think this was like super offensive because also I, I Nikita Dragon is someone that has stood up in her own activism when it comes to trans uh, being trans. And um, I think it also she's a woman of color. So it's it's one of those things where it's like lay off a little bit. I think if you want to talk about having humans on leashes, you have to do that on both sides when Snoop Dogg did it back in, back in 2003. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, if someone were going to try to do this, how do you, do you say, you know what, I'm gonna intentionally make all of these guys white, or do you say I'm gonna be inclusive? Like, what, as a, as the creative decision maker there, what should you factor in in creating an image like that? I mean, to be honest, it sounds like it's a lot of work. Like, yeah. it sounds like I just, I, I would have been like, okay, I can come up with something way better than this if it's causing all of this moment. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, I don't genuinely think that she, and that's the that's the thing, I don't think there was any malice behind it. Yeah. I think she was like, oh, this is iconic. I think this is a moment. Yeah. yeah. You know? When, when Snoop Dogg did it, the girls were all like standing, walking. I think a lot of people also got like up in arms because like they're physically crawling on the carpet. And I think this is only going to be like, she's not, it's not like they're going to cancel. I think the idea sometimes of cancel culture is like you just drag someone for a day and then you're done after it. And mm -hmm. she'll be completely fine. I don't think there's anything that yeah. is going to ruin her career after this. I don't think it's that serious. No, 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 no. At me if you feel that way, we can go <laughs> at, at me. Yeah, let us know in the comments. Um, speaking about press and influencers, Troy Sivan uh, called out an interviewer who was a little too intense in their interview. I haven't actually really <gasps> taken time to dive into this. Yes. Have you? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I read the full thread yesterday. Okay. Shall we go? Shall we? Shall we? And educate me. Okay. Andy, take it away, honey. So, Troy Sivan has a single. It's called Bloom. Now, when that had come out, a lot of people were like, what's it about? What's good about it? And he's like, it's about sex. You know, like, it's about the act of sex, blah, 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 blah. Gay and sex, by the way. So, some people would ask that in interviews, some people would cross the line and just go like, hey, tell me more about, like, your sex life because you must openly be advocating that. It's okay to talk about your sex life in, in music and in your life, so I guess it invites anybody to ask about it. So, when he got really on... on defensive like line on Twitter he went on this big thread so he kind of went off and he had a lot to say about it and then do you have anything like did I get that right I'm no you got that. you got it right and I think here's the thing, the, the initial interview won trash, whoever that journalist is. It was an LGBTQ, it's an LGBTQ New Zealand magazine. It, it was basically a, route, a, a rapid fire question series towards the end and they were like top or bottom, blah, blah, blah. And so that was like the initial interview where he was like, oh, that's why this interviewer is like so invasive, I should have asked him and then Out Magazine wrote like uh, their own op-ed on it. Because I, I do in some way agree with the Out Magazine op-ed because one, if this was like something like people.com which is probably you know considered to be a, a more of a heterocentric um, you know celebrity pop culture magazine I would be like all right that's inappropriate now you're just sexualizing you know homosexuality and gay men that we often see sometimes right. mm -hmm. but because Troy has talked about it and he actually said this was like a bottoming like a bottom anthem and then you have an LGBTQ you know magazine that is for our community by our community and they're asking this in a very kind of what it seems like a funny, lighthearted way. I felt like his reaction to it was like just like Out Magazine said. So it's okay to 
talk about it when you're promoting an album, but it's not okay to talk about it once you're like, oh, the album's done and now you're going on tour. Pick a side, sis. I think the most thing out of that interview that really irritated me was the the continuous conversation about Shawn Mendes being gay. I'm yeah. over it, he's boring, there's, he's annoying. There's a, a statement in the magazine, of Out Magazine, that says, do queer journalists have to adhere to the same respectability of politics as straight ones? Is Vaughn saying that if some fan asked him about bottoming in Twitter QA, he'd scold him harshly? Right. It's 2019, talking about anal sex shouldn't be taboo, especially in queer media. So mm. that's where he took a stance on Out Magazine. And it was. So, yeah, because I want to know. The, so, whose side are you on? Do you have a side? Did I'm, you. I'm, I agree with Troy. Like, Troy. I, I think there's a respect in space to, like, ask those questions. Right. But also, like, putting them on blast to media. You know, like, other artists talk about sex and, like, gender and a lot of other things and like straight people don't get asked all, all the time like oh so like since your your song's about sex like what kind of sex do you enjoy or like what well, kind of like straight habits? men don't get asked that, that. <laughs> well, I, I feel like that same standard needs to be held for everyone in some sense i just think because it is we're in this uh one we're in this space where we are keeping having conversations that are LGBTQ centric and we're pushing them forward in the mainstream media. We want that representation. We want everything to be normalized. Mm -hmm. And I think, yeah, it's probably, you know, distasteful in some way, but it's also, if you look at the context of everything, um, maybe that journalist was like, maybe they were kikiing on set and they had a moment and there was like, oh, we're having yeah. fun here. Let's like, let's do this. And he just kind of took it like, oh, maybe this wasn't, you know, what I really wanted. He was playing it cool instead of being like, mm -hmm. hey, can this be off the record? Don't put that in there. Right. Um, but I think, I think it's okay for LGBTQ magazines or publications to to push the narrative of what we're about. This is a part of our community. Yeah. And I think it's okay to normalize our sex. Anal sex should not be taboo. Uh, our conversations around what gay people do should not be taboo because we're asking for representation and when we get it, we say, oh my God, that's too invasive. Right. So either be full into it or don't talk about it at all, but also on the other hand, don't ask for representation if you're not ready for it. True, 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 true. Um, speaking, I guess, about... Sexuality? Sexuality? <laughs> And then parting ways from things. <laughs> Sexuality. And, uh, Shane Dawson ah, and Lisa. Okay, so Shane Dawson and Lisa Schwartz. Um, they used to date, and now Lisa is releasing a book that talks a lot about their relationship. Um, after they broke up, Shane came out as bi, and okay. now he is engaged to Rylan Adams. So, one chapter in her book is called My Gay Boyfriend. Um, so, no. but they talk I hate about that. It. That, that you no. already, that's the title of the chapter? Title of the chapter. She, wow. they talk I'm about it exhausted. together. <laughs> they talk about it together on camera. Mm -hmm. She ran it by him first. And he said, that's okay. Um, Maybe it's based on the misconception that she thought she had. I mean, yeah, well, she didn't understand what bisexuality was. If you're uh, dating men as a bisexual person, that does not make you gay. Right. If you're dating women as a bisexual person, that does not make you straight. Right. You are still bisexual. Right. Yes. Yeah. Like, so he kind of, after, he, like, in the conversation, they were kind of joking about it, and he goes, oh, maybe Bye Bye Boyfriend would have been a better yeah, chapter Yeah, for title. sure. Yeah, yeah, instead of my gay boyfriend. Right. I had no clue, like, I knew he was bisexual, but I didn't know he ever dated a woman at that time. And I feel like Shane Dawson in that era, I never really paid attention to. Mm -hmm. um, and so for me, that this was all very new. And she's actually really cute. It looks like two Mormons are together by <laughs> religion. Like, that's what it looks like. And <laughs> I'm just confused it's that like it even all, happened. It's all no, Americans. It's <laughs> yeah. an awkward meet and greet happening right now. Yes. Yeah. 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 In this video, you know, talking about Shane meeting Ryland and how happy she was for him. She feels like he's finally his full self. She's finally, he's finally embracing who he is um, genuinely. And she's like very happy so to see that. So she's claiming like, pretty sure he's gay. Is that what she's claiming or like? I don't think so. Okay. I, I don't like, think mm. she's going that far. Got it. Um, mm. I just. I, you have to think about it when it comes to like cis hetero, like 
people. I think our even in our own LGBTQ community, mm -hmm. people think bisexuality is not a real situation. Yeah. Really? And I think that yeah. is a narrative that has been pushed forward. And even if you think about it, the conversations, if you're speaking from like your point of view uh -huh. where you're a cis hetero woman, yeah. there you it, it, would it be difficult for you to date a guy that has slept with another guy? And a lot of women are uncomfortable about having that conversation because mm -hmm. they're like, oh, he's automatically gay. Bisexual, bis bisexuality is a sexuality and, and it's, it is one of those things where people can be attracted to both sexes. Yeah. yeah. And so it's been, I think, you know, she's not full out coming out there saying like, you know, she's in some way saying, he, oh, he's gay. But I think there's some underlying ish, like kind of there's rooted. Some tweeting in there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, Shane tends to like go out on a limb for people when he doesn't need necessarily need to. You're right. <laughs> I agree with that because he doesn't even do interviews, but it seems like he, he does. One thing I will say I kind of admire, but also I feel like can really be taken advantage of from him um, is him be stepping up for the kind of people in his life when they need him to either promote something or something. Yeah. And so it's, it can be like, was this really needed? Did they really kind of need to rehash and rebring up? Because I'm pretty sure everyone was like, Borrow? Like, I mean, what? Yeah. Everyone was like sleeping on it. Yeah. Like, like, I don't want to be awake up on this nap. Like, yeah. <laughs> like what does this even mean? And like, so... hi, we're back and we're selling something. Um, but like, he probably doesn't get any profits. Would you, is there an ex of you guys, like for you guys that you would like come back and talk about? Hey, let's talk about everything that happened. Do you I guys had a breakup happen just a few weeks ago. So like, Aww. but also, but also, okay, yeah. I'm sorry, <laughs> but like, oh god, yeah, there there are exes where you're like you end on good terms and you're like, yeah, I would think about coming back to that. There's like one yeah. or two people I can name off the top of my head. Other people I'm just like, we ended for a reason yeah. because I did not enjoy one thing you did. It still stands out to me that you are that person. Oh, but yeah. If I was depends. making money from it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, cut if the check. I was not cut the check. Making money, no. Yeah. Cut the check. I don't know. What's about? I mean, I recently, so my ex, and I was with him for five years, and it was a very toxic relationship. Mm -hmm. um, I'm overwhelmed. That's no, a lot of gay years. it was, no, it, it was, like, from college, and we moved out here together, and he, we broke up, and it was a really terrible breakup, and then, right, but, like, he just recently moved to New York, uh -huh. and he wanted to, like, meet up and have, like, one final dinner, yeah. and, like, just kind of talk, not even talk everything out. Sorry, it's like Survivor Elimination, the final dinner. It was a final <laughs> dinner, and so it was, like, it was, like, I was, like, okay, I don't really need this, but Pushing. free, yeah, free dinner, like free food, free drinks. Yes, please, sign me up. <laughs> and so we did it, and like we, like we had already met actually a year before that, and actually had that talk where it was a uh, final wait, talk. Wait, a year? A, so a year later, like a so year you later, like write you off in the life. Yeah, is this like their final write off? You think? So? For sure. Yeah, we don't even text anymore. He changed Literal his number, and I was like, cause... I was like, I didn't really need it. I had moved on. Like, I'm good. Like, I'm dating someone new. Like, mm -hmm. so it's one of those things where um, it's interesting how some people hold on to things. Like, she mm -hmm. was like, I still kind of hadn't gotten over him, and and maybe this was just for a YouTube video, but move on. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, um, but. A you lot. guys, let us know what you guys think about all of these topics, yes. um, especially Shane and, and Lisa. There's a lot of hot topics in here. Um, let us know what you guys think down in the comments below. And we will see you next week for another Uncensored. We will see you next, <laughs> next week for more Uncensored What's Trending. We will see you next week for another Uncensored. Uh. <laughs> Please do a blooper reel. I need a blooper reel. We will see you next week for another Uncensored What's Trending. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye, guys.